Welcome back to another Sam Tutoring video. My name is Samuel and I'm a private tutor based in London and I run Sam Tutoring, which is a tutoring service and consultancy. There's a very good chance that if you're watching this, you're about to start university. It's going to be great. There are gonna be multiple classes, readings, seminars and tutorials, and not to mention examinations and assessments, all while balancing an active social life and taking care of your body and mind. Easy, right? In this video, I'm going to be giving you some basic tips on how you can develop habits and practices that should set you up for success in your degree and beyond. Please note that these are only basic entry level things that you should be doing. I will make further videos detailing more advanced tips, but this is just to help you ease into uni life and set you up for success. So let's get into it. Now, the first tip I'm going to do is use a calendar. If you don't already use a calendar or you're not interested in scheduling, university is going to be a much more difficult place than it needs to be. Using a calendar will not only allow you to see what's coming up, but it will also help you to plan. You're going to have lectures and seminars, examinations, essays, labs if you're doing a science subject. You're going to need somewhere to see when all of this is coming. Enter the calendar. It doesn't matter what calendar you use, it can be a physical one or a digital one that you can access anywhere that you are. I personally discovered Google Calendar during university, it's great. You can color code and set up notifications and reminders ahead of time that you can get on your phone when you're out and about. The next tip that I'm going to give is you're going to need to be able to access your course information very very easily. So along with studying your course, you'll need information about each module. This includes the number, dates, and maybe even the location of lectures and labs, how much each module or class is actually worth, so you know how much time to attribute to it. Also when your exams are and how many you have. You may also find it useful to know more generic information such as your lecturer's office hours so you can reach out to them if you have any problems. Next, let's talk about a filing system. There are going to be a lot of documents thrown your way over the course of your degree. Assignments, essays, articles, lecture notes, you name it. You'll need an effective filing system so you can access all of these files very quickly and not waste time looking for that diagram in lecture three under a mountain of paper. Have both a physical and digital filing system that you can access with ease. Next, let's talk about textbooks. Now, my advice regarding textbooks would be to wait as long as you can before purchasing them. University textbooks tend to be very expensive and you may not actually need to buy them. If you can speak to students in the year above and see if a particular textbook is really needed, there may be a copy in the university library or an ebook version. Balance this with having all you need for your classes at the beginning of term so you don't fall behind. Next, let's talk about preparing your study environment. You're going to spend hours upon hours studying, well at least hopefully you are. Your study environment should be inviting and not distracting. Take time and design the optimum study environment. It may be as simple as buying a plant or placing your desk next to a window so you have plenty of natural light. Make sure you also have a good quality chair to protect your back and having all you need within arm's reach means once you sit down, you can work for long periods of time. Next, let's talk about exploration. Explore the campus of your university. You'll have access to millions of pounds of real estate for your use. Along with the obvious places such as the library and your accommodation, see if there are other hidden gems on campus where you can work quietly if the other spaces are full or if you just fancy a change of scenery. If you're going to university in a new town, you'll need to know where all the useful places are along with the landmarks. So this can include things such as the high street, medical facilities and parks along with entertainment venues and restaurants. Now another useful tip for university will be to be relatively consistent with how you're spending your time. Now having a calendar will help you plan how you want to be spending your day. Now when you're learning new content such as the things you're learning in lectures you're gonna want to set aside a consistent time each week to go over and digest what you've learned. Failure to do this will result in cramming, which may be okay for a couple of times, but becomes very stressful when it's a lifestyle. Trust me. You'll also need to allocate time consistently to do other things that take care of your mental and physical health. Now let's talk about sleep. There's almost this accepted notion that once you're in university, it's the cool and expected thing that you won't get much sleep, you'll be chronically tired. Now, I'm not saying there won't be some late nights, but good adequate sleep will help you function better, allow you to learn more effectively, and generally allow you to enjoy your studies a lot more. So in short, get some sleep. 
Now, one tip that's definitely gonna be useful for you is to prepare for contact time. Now, university for the most part is a meritocracy. Now, what that means is that the level of success you experience at university is directly linked to the amount of effort you put in. University is a bit different from school in that you're normally taught as a collective, not a class of, for example, 30 like you were at school. There's not as much time to make sure you understand the concept or if you need extra support before the lecturer needs to move on. So the contact time, for example, seminars, tutorials, supervisions, whatever your university calls it, are the only timetable time you will have to be able to sit with your lecturers in small groups and ask questions and discuss the content of your course. Now let's talk about music. Now listening to your favorite songs can be very distracting, especially when you're trying to study. But there is music that can help with the study process. So it may be useful for you to have a few study playlists on hand for those longer studying sessions to make it a bit easier to get into that flow state where you have maximum focus and are able to absorb really easily what you're taking in. Last but not least, I want to talk about setting goals. This is definitely a useful exercise, not just for university, but also for life. This allows you to work consciously towards something that is measurable. You can start off with small goals like speak to 10 new people or attend every lecture this semester. I would definitely encourage you though that when you are setting goals that you focus on more input driven goals instead of output driven goals. For example, instead of saying I'm going to aim to get 98% on the test, it makes more sense to aim to cover 100% of the content in the required depth because it's much easier to control the amount of effort you put in than it is to control the result. And there you have it. As I said before, these are just some basic tips that you can use to get you started. I will be making more in-depth videos around studying and the student experience, so look out for those. With a new semester starting, what are you looking forward to or not looking forward to the most? And where are you studying? Let me know in the comments. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing and do follow me on socials. Thank you so much for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. Bye-bye.